guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of the How About Them Celtics podcast. Sam and I are here recording on Thursday, December 8th. I forgot what day it was for a second, but recording here the day after uh, the Celtics took down the Phoenix Suns by a uh, a whopping score that I don't know off the top of my head, but it was around 30. I think it was 126 to 97, maybe, if, if I'm correct. Uh, 125 it was a blowout. to 98. Okay. Close enough, but uh, just know that they blew out the Suns, who we were out here hyping up as a potential big game. Uh, I will say, though, I'm going to do a shameless plug uh, immediately out the gates. Um, a little bit of housekeeping for you guys that listen on audio platforms. Uh, if you didn't know, Sam and I host a pregame Celtics show before every Celtics game on the How About Them Celtics YouTube channel. Um and if you're not listening to that, make sure to check that out. We appreciate it. We have a good chat going, and we we, we talk to the chat before the games. And if you do watch that and you watch on Guy Boston Sports, uh, we're no longer going to be streaming on Guy Boston Sports. Um, and if that's where you watch the YouTube videos of this podcast as well, uh, we're not going to be posting those there anymore. So if, if you watch us exclusively on the Guy Boston Sports YouTube channel, make sure to subscribe to the How About Them Celtics YouTube channel because that's where all of our content is going to be moving forward. Uh, I just wanted to get that out of the gates in the first minute of the podcast so you guys would know uh, where we're going to be at. But we can start talking uh, about the Celtics. This might be a little bit of a shorter episode, 30, 40 minutes. For those of you that like uh, hearing us for longer, I'm sorry. We, we, we're busy guys. We'll, we'll be back. Close, but yeah, exactly. This is going to be a three-episode week. You, you'll exactly. be fine. This is, this is a big week, and I think we have a guest on our next episode as we well. We do. So be, be ready for Barring that. catastrophe. But, <laughs> exactly. But the Celtics took down the Phoenix Suns in dominant fashion the other night. Uh, almost had a 50-point lead at one point. It, it was absurd. Um, and the Suns are the best team in the West. And in my opinion, the Suns are the third best team in the NBA behind the Celtics and the Bucks. And I think that just shows you how big of a gap there is between the Celtics and the Bucks and then the Suns. I was on a, a radio show I do in Vancouver with Marcus Fitzgerald, legend out there. I've done it a few times. And I was telling him, like, th this just shows you, like, it's the Bucks and the Celtics, and then it is the rest of the NBA. And if you didn't know that before, the Celtics beating the Suns by as much as they did, I, I think that should show you that. Yeah, I mean... What a performance, right? It was one of those things where like you were just waiting for Phoenix to find their footing and start making some shots and it yes. just never <laughs> happened. And then the Celtics, Celtics did not come out very hot themselves. It was kind of a slow start for both teams. Like halfway through the first quarter, both teams had like 14 points. It was not mm -hmm. an explosive offensive game. And then all of a sudden the Celtics put together a run and they were up 10 at the end of the quarter. Fast forward to halftime, they're up 27 and Phoenix is just never got out of the the out of the gates whatever whatever <laughs> yeah. you want to call it whatever the expression is they, they were they didn't go anywhere they they were very poor um devin booker mediocre devin booker one of those guys i'm not convinced is that good uh let no let, let, i just know i knew it would get under your skin come on uh, i just saw a tweet on this he's uh, fine someone he's, questioning he's not whether Zach or Levine, not... and he's actually done something yeah that's what I'm going to say. Someone was on Twitter questioning whether or not he can be the one option on a title team. And he has been the one option on a title contending team. He did that a couple of years ago. And I think the fact that they lost uh, to the Mavericks the way they did has like people's opinions kind of off centered about the Suns. I still think they're a great team just because the Celtics are better. doesn't mean the Suns aren't a great team. Um, and I think Devin Booker can absolutely be the one option on a title contending team. I mean, he fi finished just behind uh, or maybe even just ahead of Jason Tatum and MVP voting last year. He was all NBA first team, just like Jason Tatum, I believe. Like he is a top notch player. I'm not saying I think he's better than Jason Tatum, but I think he's around that same level. Like uh, I think he's a, a 1A on a championship team. Do I think he needs a 1B more than Tatum does? Sure. It's just that Tatum has the luxury of also having <laughs> Jalen Brown on the roster, who's been ridiculous. Yeah, Jalen Brown lately, and I don't know if we want to save this for later, but he's been on an absolute tear. He yeah. has been playing we, his I mean, best basketball. There, there's not much else to say about the Suns game. <laughs> so, yeah. the, the only thing I was going to say is it kind of came out of nowhere. Like, I looked down at my phone, and they were up by 50. Like, I was just like, what? what well, what the Suns here, game but? was actually, like, real funny. Like, we talked <laughs> we talked to Evan earlier this week, and the title of the pod is literally, like, the Celtics are comically good or whatever it is. And it's absolutely true. Like, I was laughing my ass off watching yes. that game and tweeting. <laughs> exactly. Like, that's the most – first of all, I was on fire tweeting last night. But second, <laughs> it, it was a really great, like, just, like, fun, relaxing game. Like, it was kind of funny. 
scouring any house or on the call if you're watching the local broadcast. It sucks Gorman wasn't there, but I will say they did a good job in a blowout. When when it's a blowout for a commentator, that is a nightmare scenario because you have to fill time because nobody cares about what's happening on the floor anymore. You have to tell stories, and they had plenty yeah. of those. So that was a lot of fun to watch. Um, I mean, you had the Brad Stevens picture where he's flexing. You had Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown dancing. Like, it was yeah. just a really funny day all around. Mm-hmm. That's my kind of thing. And I just didn't love, I guess if we really want to complain, Sam finds a way to complain. Uh, I don't <laughs> like that they had the real players out there so long. Like, like they were up like yes. 40 and they still had Tatum out there. I was like, all right, let's all calm down a minute. Let's get uh like I tweeted, I was like, pick five guys out of the crowd with Celtics jerseys and put them out there for like, I really, it does not matter. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I wrote about the same thing today. I don't think it's gone out yet for Celtics blog, but effectively the title was the Celtics are having fun with their, you know, greatness. I, I can't exactly remember what I titled it, but um, you had the moment that you said you wrote about Jason Tatum, or excuse me, Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart dancing on the One side of the most line. obscure articles I've ever done. I like found all these different clips of them dancing like throughout their careers. And I put them in and I didn't realize mm-hmm. like how like un- how often un- like remarkable this is like, it's just like another day. <laughs> yeah. They people just do it, it, but people went nuts about it. In addition to that, you had Jason Tatum throwing a shot at Grant Williams <laughs> after That's the game. Grant Williams did the, uh, the kiss of death, uh, you know, celebration after three. And Jason Tatum basically said after the game, he goes, yeah, I told Grant, I said, you know, you can break it out, but you got to look cool. See, I look cool when I do it. You don't look cool when you do it. You look like so a kid. It, yeah, exactly. You're he too was excited. There's a video of them in the huddle of Tatum trying to teach him how to do it in like a quote unquote cool manner. Obviously, the um, uh, Brad Stevens picture of him flexing was another cool one. Um, there was a uh, Marcus Smart after the game in the tunnel, uh, saying you got Jason and Jalen on either hip. You got pistols, bow, bow or something like that. Like the oh, Celtics are just, this. yeah, yeah. It's a video. It's funny. I'll send it to you, but it, it's just, they're having fun. And I wrote a very similar article about the Celtics last year, about them being able to have fun. And it was during the Portland game. Um, yeah, after that, Portland game that, that was remarkable. But my point is they weren't able to have fun last year until like, march right until like the beginning of march this year it is december 8th they have already won 21 games which they didn't win 21 games last season until january 10th so like they're infinitely better and they're they're playing out like just fun like they're open they're you know having a good time and this quote from jason tatum i think is exactly what celtics fans need to hear and what like what you need to take into consideration because like you'll have the people saying, you know, Oh, they're trying too much. They need to have fun. But you also have the people saying, Oh, you can't have fun. You have a goal. This is a quote from Jason Tatum after the sun's game. I wouldn't say we're playing angry. We're having a lot of fun, but the goal is still the same to get back to the finals and get over that hump. So while we're having fun and happy with the way we're playing, nobody in that locker room is celebrating or satisfied. None of this means anything. If we don't hang a banner, that's just like perfection. That that was something like I was like considering writing about, but I was like, ah, it's a good quote. That? I think it's, it's a good quote, quote, but who's clicking it? That was uh, the closer to my article, so let's let's not crap on my article. No, I'm not crapping on it. I just said <laughs> I that know. that would not be the title of my piece. I didn't I didn't know no. how to work it. I, I did not have the energy to really think about it. I was tired today because <laughs> I stayed up late. Um, swinging back to Jalen Brown though, he has been on an absolute here lately. He's he's found something. He's gone to another level, and he looks more confident out there, and he's more reliable. He is in the top 13 for scoring on the season. He's at about 26 a game. Over the last 10 or 7 games, I think this last 7 games, he's in the top 10 at 30 points a game. And in those last 7 games, his turnovers are down too. He's only at about 2.3 per game compared to 3 for the whole mm-hmm. season. Put, yeah. To put that in perspective, Marcus Smart, who's been very good with taking care of the ball, is at 2.2 for the year. So mm-hmm. Jalen Brown is putting up similar numbers. He's more under control. And, I mean, you saw it against Phoenix. You saw it against Brooklyn. He can just take over a game, and he's so effective when he does it. Came out against Brooklyn 5 for 5 from 3 to start the game. Phoenix, he got Devin Booker right mm-hmm. into foul trouble, and then that was really a wrap. He's just on another level. He's better than he's ever been. and it might be time to start really thinking, can he be an all-star starter? Can he be all NBA? These are realistic questions to ask. It's not tomfoolery, right? It's not me last year saying Marcus Smart could be an all-star. 
which unfortunately he probably won't be just because of the depth. No, with guards. <laughs> I was, was going to say, but well, that, that's the point. That's the point. Okay. It was supposed to be, I was dumb. Okay. But um, seriously, he, he's been so good and he's figuring out how to play under control. And not to mention Tatum's mm-hmm. playing his ass off too. So you have a fantastic one, two punch as the YouTube short says that you posted minutes ago that, that people are complaining about. Mm-hmm. It, it's a great time to be a Celtics fan. You're in good hands. Exactly. And um, I just posted something in the, in the comments of our uh, recording studio oh. that we record on, but uh, I did it cause I thought I could post it on the screen, but I cannot. So I'm just going to share my screen uh, so we can take a look at something real quick. <clears throat> if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see it. And if you're not, Go watch on YouTube because it's it's a good time. So uh, player A versus player B is effectively what I'm going to show you right here. Um, you'll see it on YouTube, and I'll read it for you, those not on YouTube. Player A uh, averaging 26.9 points, 8.0 rebounds, 4.4 assists, 45.3% from the field, and 35.3% from three. Player B, 26.7 points, 7.1 rebounds, 3.6 assists, 49.8% from the field, uh, and 34.5% from three extremely similar numbers, right? Like, like you're either taking an extra rebound uh, and assist, or you're taking the more efficient player from the field effectively is what you're saying, right? Yep. Do you have a preference here or are they basically on par? I mean, it's well, at that I'll point. tell you what, I know player B is uh, the second option on his team. So mm-hmm. I'm going to take, but <laughs> in all seriousness, I, I kind of value field goal percentage more than rebounds or assists. Okay. At least in this kind so, of differential. Do you know? Who I, I know who is? player B is because my nose was in the books today. Don't worry about it. Player but B, player A. I do not know who it is. Player B is Jalen Brown. That the, I know. This, yep. Player A is Jason Tatum last year. Okay. That is all NBA first team fifth and MVP voting Jason Tatum last year, uh, and we are comparing. And Sam even took Jalen Brown over player A. Like. Well, it's because I'm biased. And I knew, of course, I, of knew, course. I knew for a fact it was a Celtic. But in all seriousness, as you know much as saying, I joke, right? I, I am a I'm big fan make. of the efficiency. I do not like I seeing guys miss in and shoot under 50%. So that 49.8% is pretty good. It's huge. It's Especially huge. considering that the three point percentage is low for him. Yes. But the point I'm trying to make is. We are talking about, oh, can Jalen Brown make an all NBA team? Can Jalen Brown, you know, be an all star starter? Jason Tatum put up effectively what Jalen Brown is putting up this year, last year, and he was first team all NBA top seven in MVP voting. Like he was this guy. <clears throat> look at the numbers. Look at what Jalen Brown is doing. He is just Jason Tatum last year. The only difference is Jason Tatum got even better. He's effectively doing exactly what Jalen, uh, Jason Tatum, excuse me, did last year. So he needs to get just as much love and he's not going to because he's the quote unquote second option and Jason Tatum is playing ridiculous and numbers are up across the board, but he is putting up virtually the same numbers that Jason Tatum did last year. Jalen Brown's not going to be an all NBA first team guy. He should be an all NBA second or third team guy and he should be an all star, you know, player at the very least. He will be, but starter probably if the Celtics are this good. But what he's doing this year is incredible. And like you said, the turnovers are coming down a little bit. He, he's chilling out on that. The field goal percentage is great. You can't really say enough good things about Jalen Brown this year. Yeah. And I will say this, the Tatum stat line from last year is actually really impressive considering how bad he was <laughs> right at the beginning of the season. <laughs> and and that's why he made first team all NBAs because he was on such a tear at the end of the season. And that's what everyone remembered, but he yeah. was really, really bad a year ago. So to see that he put up similar numbers to Jalen Brown this year, who's playing his best basketball besides the field goal percentage, you're really getting a lot out of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like Evan uh, Valenti new friend of the pod said last episode is kind of like teams that have to play them. are having to play prime Kobe and Shaq, right? Like they're averaging a combined almost 57 points at this point. It's absurd. And then not only are they averaging 57, but you got Marcus smart averaging 11 and eight. You got Malcolm Brogdon averaging 14, four and four, Derek white averaging 12 points a game. Sam Hauser averaging eight, Grant Williams averaging 10, Al Horford averaging 12. Like you've got an onslaught of just weapons that the Celtics are throwing at you. And as the sun saw last night for us, two nights ago for you guys, it's not a fun time when you have to play the Celtics. Uh, it is literally comical. I found myself, there was a stretch in the third quarter of that game where it was just 
bucket Tatum three Grant Williams three I was just laughing right because I was like no way this one goes in oh my god it went in no way this one goes in oh my god it went it's just it, it was incredible there is like more 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 <laughs> hey I, I wasn't against it by any means but I was like I like you said earlier I was waiting for it to slow down oh yeah after a while I was like it. all right this is enough <laughs> get him out it never did yeah that, that's the other thing and I mean we don't have to talk about this for a long time but Joe Missoula, like, there was no reason Jalen Brown needed to be in the game at the start of the fourth quarter, Joe. Like, got to get them like, stats. On. Let's breathe. They want the all NBA <laughs> money. They want the all star money. You get him those stats. Yeah. Let, let, I don't want a Tom Thibodeau situation, though. Let's, uh, no, let's calm down there. Let's, uh, get them out of the game. But we can talk about next, uh, is the Celtics defense because. Throughout the whole season, as we were just laughing at how great the offense was, the defense was a real issue early on in the season. Um, you're talking about, I think they started the year in the first 10 games, like 23rd in defensive rating. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm yoinking this stat from Grandy because I saw it on Twitter today, so it's fresh in my brain. Um, over the last uh, nine games, the Celtics are 8-1, and one, and over those nine games, they have the fourth best defensive rating. Uh, but what might be even more impressive is when they started that nine game stretch, they were 16th in defensive rating and now they are ninth. The Celtics not only have the best offense in NBA history, but now they have a top 10 defense again. And Robert Williams hasn't even returned. And you saw it in that Suns game. I, I think the Suns game, I said this on the, the show earlier uh, with Marcus that I alluded to. This was their coming out party. This is the, our offense is still what it is, but also our defense is back. So like, <laughs> be ready, NBA, because the Celtics not only let up less than 100 points, they also dropped almost 130. And that is what they can do at their peak, and that is what the league needs to be scared of. Yeah, listen, the old notebook here, got all the stats in there for you. I was in nose in the books today. I knew the pod was coming, knew we only had one game to talk about, knew we had to do some prep. Over the last 10 games, tied for first in defensive rating, Boston. And like you said, climbed up to ninth. Now in the top 10 in the league with the defensive rating and the offensive rating keeps getting better by the month. People have been raving about it, how historic it is. Yep. And it's been better. October 116, November 120. So far in December 124. And you have that defense on the rise and you have Robert Williams coming back and you didn't have Al Horford yesterday against the Phoenix Suns. My God. Good luck. <laughs> right. Good luck. And then they'll lose to like Miami, but like, <laughs> like they'll lose to Chicago, but good luck. Seriously. Like, I, I mean, I, I think they should sweep the rest of the trip. Here we go. Sam starts getting reckless. I think they should sweep <laughs> sweep. They should, they should have a chip on their shoulder when they go into the chase center on sun, uh, Saturday night. They should we talk about that. I, I do yeah. want to talk about that. Cause that was I in think the notes that's too. important. Don't of worry course, about it. I, I did some work. I've been doing work lately. <laughs> Yes. Um, Celtics have their first two day break in a little while here. I think uh, eighth and ninth. We're recording this on the eighth. It'll be mm -hmm. out for you guys to enjoy on the ninth. But uh, on the 10th, they are going into Chase Center uh, for uh, what time. I believe is a uh, prime time. I was going to say first matchup. one, first one of the season <laughs> against the uh, Golden State Warriors, who obviously they lost in the NBA finals to last season. The Golden State Warriors, who are not exactly in the same place the Celtics are this season. Uh, Warriors, Warriors are currently they're 13 and 13 on the season. They are Do you on think the they'll be bust. fine? Is, I think is they'll keep be interrupting you. <sighs> no, see, it, it's tough because I, I cover the Warriors for heavy. So I'm like, I'm following them, obviously not as closely as the Celtics because I write for multiple outlets for the Celtics and, and this. So, but the Warriors bench is really bad. <laughs> it's like, like their starting five is like the best, you know, net rating in the league. Mm -hmm. And their bench is, pretty clearly the worst net rating in the league and Jordan Poole has been you know in and out of starting lineup because of injuries and them resting guys so it, it's not really all on him but like they lost Otto Porter Jr. they lost Nemanja Bjelica they lost uh, Gary Payton the second last year and they replaced them with Dante DiVincenzo uh, excuse me Dante DiVincenzo to Michael Green and then they're hoping the young guys <clears throat> take that step up but Steve Kerr and them haven't necessarily trusted Jonathan Kaminga until lately 
Uh, Moses Moody has been solid, but nothing great. Dante DiVincenzo dealt with an injury early in the season, and since being back, he's not shooting well from the field. Jermichael Green's been solid, but again, he's older, so he's not going to play a ton of minutes. Uh, and then James Wiseman just got sent down to the G League uh, for a stint, and now he's back with the team. And in his first game back with the team against the Jazz, who have been struggling lately as well, he played five minutes, uh, and the Warriors collapsed in the final moments and lost to the Jazz. And granted, I'm pretty sure Steph and Draymond didn't play that game, so it wasn't a fully healthy Warriors team. But if you're the Warriors... Not a fully healthy Jazz uh, team either, by the way. Exactly, exactly. And the Warriors were up by four points with, uh, I believe, 10 seconds left on the clock, and they Ooh. lost. They 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 lost. They, they um, <clears throat> let Malik Beasley get open for a three because Clay was caught sleeping, as he said himself. Uh, and then on the inbounds play with six seconds left, uh, they got the ball stolen, and the Jazz hit a layup with a second left and won the game. Oh. So uh, <laughs> it was by all means of the word an ugly loss and it's kind of an epitome of the warrior season i don't know that being said they are still the warriors they still do have stephen curry and you bet your ass they're going to be healthy for the celtics because every team on planet earth is going to be healthy for the celtics we saw it with the suns chris paul magically back for the celtics game didn't go in his favor but, but he was healthy and the thing to note with the warriors they are 11 and 2 at home they are 2 and 11 on the road so yep. Celtics are going into Chase Center where they, they play well, usually when they're in San Francisco, when they're, you know, at Golden State over the years. Yep. But it's not going to be an easy game. Steph Curry is putting up MVP numbers. And if the Warriors were top of the conference, it'd probably be a Tatum versus Curry battle for MVP. <clears throat> Draymond Green is still Draymond Green. He's shooting very well from three this year. So be ready to be angry at that, Sam. Uh, <laughs> it, it, well, for him, at least he's shooting well. Clay Thompson has found his footing. He's uh, doing good. Andrew Wiggins will not be playing, so that's an advantage for the Celtics because Wiggins is hurt. Well, uh, but Jordan Poole, <clears throat> exactly. Horford might be out too. We don't know. But um, as long as Stephen Curry and Draymond Green and Clay Thompson are in the game, it's not going to be easy for the Celtics. So I, I do think it'll be a good test. But if the Celtics go into Golden State and you know do what they did to the Suns or anything close to what they did to the Suns, that, again, is just going to be like, okay, this the West Coast trip could be their coming out party. Yeah, people will be talking. People will be saying things for sure if they steamroll the Warriors like they did to Phoenix. I fully expect a great game on Saturday night. I think the Celtics should come to play. Not that there really have been games besides at the United Center that they haven't this season, but they should have a chip on their shoulder, man. That The way they lost at finals last year was brutal. I'm still upset about it. I'm not on the team. They should be upset about it. You should really want this game on Saturday at the very least. And then obviously you go to L.A. and you play those teams and you play the Lakers. You should really want that one, too. And you'll play the Clippers, who are supposed to be one of the better teams and everyone's healthy. And I would imagine Kawhi will play that game if he's yeah. resting his knee and on some kind of plan, he's going to pick that game to play. Unless they really mm -hmm. don't want to challenge. But I, I just think that will be a game that he would get up for. Um, but back to Golden State. It's a good test. It's a good test to see if you've improved it is. It, you're defensively. Can you cover Curry any better? Are you more prepared this time? I mean, obviously, they don't have the depth that they had last year. They lost Gary Payton, yep. lost Otto Porter, and so on. Juan Toscano Anderson now with the Lakers. Mm -hmm. yep. um, it should be a good one. Like I said, well, these guys chip on the shoulder. That That's what it is for me. Let me ask you this. Do you think this could potentially be another finals preview? Could be. I... I I believe in the Warriors. Uh, I just, mm -hmm. I, I think you're right with their depth issues. They need to figure some things out, but who's to say that they won't? Um, the last I think the season, West is just so open, man. Like, <laughs> it really is. anybody can come it out is. of the West. That, that's why. That's one of the reasons why mm -hmm. I think so. I, I think they uh, don't need to be ready that at this point of the season. Just look what the Celtics did last year. I think that's as kind of what get, I've been saying to myself about yeah. like the Warriors. Like just look yeah. what the Celtics did last year. As long as the Warriors get top six, I think they'll be okay. That that's what I'm saying. As long as they're and I heard this, uh, you know, I forget where I was listening to to basketball, but as long as the Warriors can avoid the play in where anything can happen, really, I think they'll be just fine. Uh, and then at that point, you know, you take one on the road and you're good at home, and they'll they'll figure it out from there. But the West right now is like. <laughs> The difference between one through 11 is four games, right? Like yeah. uh, in the East, the difference between one through three is four and a half games. Yep. <laughs> the difference between one through 10 is nine and a half. So good. The West right now is like Pelicans, Suns, Grizzlies, Nuggets, Kings, Jazz are the top six right now. Meaning if the playoffs started today, 
Luca would be in the play-in, Dame would be in the play-in, Kawhi and Paul George would be in the play-in, and the Warriors would be in the play-in. And the Timberwolves would miss the playoffs completely, which is, like, absurd. So I I think the Warriors should be fine, and they should be able to get into the playoffs. Um, But if you're looking at this matchup, you know, in a a vacuum, just this Celtics-Warriors matchup, this is probably going to be the the most they get up all season long outside of the playoffs because they want to put their foot down on the Celtics team. And if anything, like you said, the Celtics should want to get up for this game too. You just lost to this team. You just let this team take banner 18 away from you. Like show some fight, show show that you're here and this is your year to finally do it. Um, So I I expect the Celtics to come to play in a big way against the Warriors. Yeah. I mean, you said it perfectly. This is a team that took the title from you. You were, Minutes away from going up three to one in game four, you did it to yourself. I mean, l- yeah. let's let's be real here. You chucked a bunch of threes. You didn't make any of them. You didn't really work <laughs> any harder to get any better shots than that. And you lost the game. But at the same time, they had to knock down shots. They had to make the big shots. They had to create mm-hmm. those shots and be poised enough to put a comeback together. They were there before yes. they'd been there. They used the experience and they they took it from you. Derek White said on the Reddick podcast, which Jack has not listened to yet, so we will not get into too much. Um, it's my bad. That's it, it was a backbreaking thing for them to lose that game. Yeah. And and people always, t- that game will be a Steph game forever because he had game 40 four, right? points or whatever. But I mean, to me, that will always be, they, they kicked that one away. It, ridiculous. It, it's, it's mm-hmm. December 8th and it's still, it's been six months. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, can, I truly cannot believe they it. lost that game. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, they, they shouldn't have lost. <laughs> they shouldn't have lost the game. And uh, as Grant Williams so eloquently said in the offseason when it didn't matter anymore, they believed they were the better team, but the Warriors were the more disciplined team. Well, and... they were. They were absolutely exactly. the better team. I They're agree, the best but... team in the league right now. That This is prime. That is a great quote because just look where it got him last year. You exactly. can, And look at Phoenix last year. Phoenix won 60 games last year. They lost to Dallas. They were up three to two, if I'm not mistaken, right? They were up three to two mm-hmm. in that, and they lost yeah. it. You cannot screw around here once the playoffs roll around. It is December now, right? It, it doesn't matter right this second. Mm-hmm. But it's very possible this this season ends in disappointment. It doesn't seem like it at all right now. I mean, you're 21 and five. You're putting whoever's on the other side of the floor in a body bag every day. There, there <laughs> really is nothing to worry about right now. Your team isn't healthy. Al Horford has COVID. And Robert Williams isn't playing. Blake Griffin's going out there and giving you reasonable numbers. Had nine and nine against Phoenix, nearly a double double. What a game! Out rebounded Aiton, which is what we were worried. Yeah, about. I mean the guy has been unbelievable when they put him in as a starter for what you thought you would get. Mm-hmm. He's doing like everything you could want from him. Maybe it's because he's refreshed and he's not having to go out there and have a heavy workload. Maybe it's because <laughs> they're just kind of letting him be him and 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 play a role instead of having to create or post up or anything like that to where he's set up to fail. I don't really know, but I think it's pretty great how they just use him as a rotation piece instead of somebody that's like playing like 10 minutes a game and really can't get a rhythm when he's in the game. He has at least the green light in terms of minutes. He he doesn't have to worry <laughs> about trying to cram in any stats or cram in any opportunities. Not that that's why he came to the Celtics. He obviously wants to yeah. compete and to win. But it takes a lot of pressure off him if he's going out there and playing 30 minutes. He, he doesn't really have to worry about what he's doing each time up the floor in that degree to make sure he's not costing himself minutes. He just knows this is this is my role. This is where I'm going to play. And it's carved out already. 100%. Blake's been great. And like you said, in his, what, five starts now, they're undefeated. So Six? You re- <laughs> no, I thought it was no. five. Yeah, five. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh the point is <clears throat> Celtics have not lost this year when Blake Griffin starts but for those of you you know in the comments making fun of people know that does not mean Blake Griffin should start all the time <laughs> that is not <clears throat> not the point we're making but uh last thing we can talk about today as we did say this is a shorter episode in between uh, our two guest episodes um <clears throat> December 15th so about a week from now uh which we will have another guest on a, th- a third one we're raking in the guest for you guys Very to talk about that lately yes sir Jack's um, crush <laughs> December 15th 
um, is the unofficial start to the trade season in the NBA because that's when most of the players who signed this past summer become eligible to be traded. Um, so I think that's where a lot of teams will start taking deals seriously. And if they have already, you know, come to quote unquote agreements internally on deals, and you can obviously start discussing now because the season is open, but that's when you might see a uh, trade start, you know, coming in officially, or at the very least rumors start to tick up. Um, what does that mean for the Celtics? Probably Nothing. not much, <laughs> but you've heard, you know, the rumors on Yaka Pertle, they're looking for multiple firsts for him, which seems a bit expensive and if you're the Celtics you can't package Gallinari for him because that's where he came from in a trade anyways <clears throat> so that probably <clears throat> excuse me doesn't work um you could trade Pritchard and a bunch of bench guys but again one of those bench guys would probably have to be Blake Griffin and at that point is it even worth it because you'd have to re-sign Pirtle for next year on a probably an expensive deal um you could look to sign or excuse me trade for a wing somewhere maybe you look at the Thunder uh and see if they want to tank more you throw a second and get Kenrich Williams back the, the deals like that are the only ones that you could see potentially being worth it for the Celtics. But you also have to consider the point of you could be doing something, you know, I, this isn't correctly phrased, but effectively making a trade could be subtraction by addition. You'd be subtracting I, from the team. I agree. The, the team what you're trying to say is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Yes. 100%. Go on. Yeah, so like you don't want to mess up the team's chemistry. You don't want to, uh, you know, add someone into the mix that isn't going to get minutes or is going to be unhappy. What the Celtics have right now is very clearly working. So why mess with it? Mm. Is, is effectively what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I mean, I wrote up some like mock Pritchard trades just because he's the only person I could see them getting rid of to where it wouldn't subtract anything. You just kind of bring it. it. It would be similar to like a TPE type deal just because you're not really playing him. You didn't play him Monday against Toronto, even though Brogdon was out. So I, I thought that could be like an experimentation type thing where they're like, how do we fare with only two guards in the rotation today? Um, but even then, like there's not a lot out there. The most intriguing one is like an auto Porter thing, but that would never happen. They just signed him. They're not going to get rid of him. Yeah. He's been hurt. Like there's no reason for them to do that. The only the only thing is like Toronto doesn't have any guard depth on the bench, so it would make a little bit of sense in terms of boosting their flexibility and floor spacing and ability to rest Van Vliet if he needs it. Um, I also threw one together for Rudy Gay, not appealing at all. But if they wanted him, they could put him in the Blake Griffin role and uh, wheel him out there if Tatum or Brown needs a rest and say go go have fun. And uh, who is this again? Sorry, I, I, I... Uh, Rudy Gay. Not a good. Oh, yeah. Not efficient. <laughs> not not mm -hmm. playing well, but I don't know. Not a good I, I was like, all right. And then uh, Portland was the last one I had. And I Winslow Winslow. That wasn't that's an interesting one because that's been someone they've bad. always kind of coveted here. You know, they've all I mean, it was Danny, but he's always <laughs> been someone that's been kind of tied to the Celtics and he wouldn't be the worst. He kind of can play defense a little bit. He has enough I vision to values... keep the ball popping around. I think his value is almost too high at this point, though. Like he plays a big role for that. That Blazers yeah. team. <clears throat> that's the only worry. That's the problem. he's been good. Look at me. He's been real good this some, year for them. Some key role players around the league. <laughs> but I did write about the five fellas that are going to be eligible to be traded next week. It'll be Hauser, Cornett, Gallinari, Vonley, and oh man. Is it Blake? It's uh, Justin Jackson. Hmm. And the people on Facebook were not happy. Well, I mean, they, I don't they were not them. happy that I said <laughs> uh, they could all be traded because nobody read what I I put in there. I said, listen, this doesn't mean they're going to be traded. I'm just saying they can do it if they want. Mm -hmm. the, people I love was to like, read the title. I was like, these are the rules. They won't I'll click. Put... They won't give me any money. It's really mean. <laughs> Unfortunate. Would you? I'm trying. I'm. I'm trying to think how to say this. Are there any trades that you would make for the Celtics if you were, you know, presented with them? Like, are there any deals across the board that you'd say, okay, let's trade this and do this? Like, obviously, most of it would be around the margins, but like, could you see the Celtics making any trades this uh this season? Um, you know, I I don't I don't think so, man. Like, what? Mm -hmm. did, the only thing is like a TPE thing. That's the only thing. Yeah. And even then, like what's out there for 6.9? Not a lot. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I can do. By the way, I just got a message old, uh... saying how my views are doing well today after I just complained that no one was clicking. So there you go. Hey, what I tell you, love to see it. People love trades. People love <laughs> trades. They love people dancing. By far the most that ridiculous piece I've ever written. Well, I'll tell you this. Celtics have the, their best TPEs 
a little less than seven million, I believe. Six Players that fit in, excuse me, I have to cough. Sorry about that. Um, players that could potentially fit into that Kem Birch of the Toronto Raptors, if you're interested. But do you need? Um, you don't need that. Like I, I'm, I'm not just... interested in sliding someone in, in ahead of Cornette at this point. Cornette's too efficient to me. He's shooting 71 percent from the field, career high. You you can rely on him to come off the bench and be solid for you. What about a Cam Reddish? <laughs> Any that one's there? interesting only because he can be like a project. But then again, mm-hmm. if well, Tibbs didn't play him, so there's that. But seriously, like if in theory he should have went to the Knicks, and if he was going to be anything, got the opportunity, and they would have made a decision. Well, he's either going to be played or not. Evan Fournier instead, so that's that's his own fault. <laughs> that to me is interesting. I know it was out there that Milwaukee, Miami, and the Lakers. Were I think so. Him. Yeah, uh, not the Celtics. I think that one would be interesting because it again, like I'd rather have him sit on the bench and be a project than Justin Jackson, who has not impressed <laughs> mm-hmm. me in the slightest. Sorry. Um, I don't know any any other guys. Uh, sorry, someone's yelling in my house. I was confused. Uh, PJ Washington is another name that could potentially. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but like you have Grant. <laughs> you do. Who's better? Who's maybe, objectively maybe, better? maybe if you think Grant's gonna walk, maybe. Mm. But you're in control of that. The ball's in your court with Grant, regardless. Like you can pay him. You can match whatever. <clears throat> yes. Yes, and I mean PJ Washington would only be for like. You know, so Al Horford can get some rest at the end of the regular season. So, you know, maybe an upgrade over Blake, even though Blake's been really damn good for, for the Celtics this year. Yeah, he's um, been pretty fine. And like, outside of that, I mean, you could bring Romeo Langford back if you want to <laughs> you no, want to bring like a I don't know. Back. Like there are always interesting prospects to me. Like a reddish is interesting to me only because people rave about him. He was picked high, like He's not getting a lot of run in New York, like all those. Would you trade for Tyable if the Sixers are giving him away? Yeah, I would. I I would take him to TPE. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, would you give up like a first for him? Maybe a couple seconds would be where you max it out. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he can't shoot. That's the that, that's the thing. Like, if he's available, I, I would say is the only thing. Like for a couple seconds. Um, <clears throat> past that, I don't really see anybody else who would become available that'd be worth it. The Celtics, Alex Len, if he really wanted to try to upgrade a center position or get another guy. Uh, but like you said, Luke Cornett's been so good, it doesn't really make much sense. Yeah, Cornett's like earned um, his spot to me. That there is no need to screw with that. The only other guy is again, the Sixers rotation is pretty set, and it doesn't seem like he'd be available. But like George Niang, if they decided they want to, you know, nice cut money local, or something, a nice local exactly. ad on the team. Okay, so, I can get behind uh, that. My, my thing with Tybal is he's only playing eleven point four minutes per game uh for the sixers right now so if you wanted to bring him in just to be like a defensive guy at the end of the bench you know yeah no that, that's my favorite of all, all the ones you mentioned just because him and hauser can like combine to be one guy except hauser can kind of play defense and <laughs> if, even though he gets like picked on he does a pretty he good can. job he can but good. hauser can be the guy that can shoot and tybo can be the guy you put in if you really just need defense yeah to me that's interesting and i also think you're gonna see if he was on the team I feel like these guys that don't shoot well from three, like a Winslow, who I put in that article with the Pritchard trades, mm-hmm. their three point percentage would jump at least a little bit just because the looks that they would get would be so much. Yes, better. <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Matisse Tabby, you're talking to two times all defensive player. Like, yeah, that's he is fine. that guy. I, I take him. That, that's easy. easy. I don't think he's him. available. I don't know if he's available. I just made that up because I know he's this. This much. is just one of those things where you have to wait and see which teams start falling off. Like you really keep an eye on what's going on out West because as tight as it is now, it might not be that way the whole season. You keep an eye on teams like a Toronto, like a Miami who has potential to start falling apart, even though Toronto's mm-hmm. more likely to be on the up and up over the years than a Miami. Like, there are two, maybe a Charlotte. See if they're saying right. You mentioned <clears throat> Toronto. You think Toronto has a better future than Miami. Yeah, they have Scotty Barnes. Well, <laughs> they have I mean, Scotty Barnes. They have Pascal Siakam. They have OG Van the Vliet's have, not dumb old. The Heat, the Heat have Adebayo and Hero. That's it. Well, and Struess they have, and Caleb Martin, and you know Gabe Vincent. All those guys that I mentioned for Toronto besides almost thirty. Bam versus like Siakam. Toronto wins. And Fleet's 28. Like, it's not like he's young. Like, he's he, older. I'm pretty once sure once you get over 30, that's where you, you start looking around. I, <laughs> I still think Toronto has a more sustainable team. Interesting. Yeah. I, I mean, okay. we've we've argued about Bam in the past. He's fine. 
he's fine, but like he's not going to be your. I think Bam Hero is enough to make a playoffs. Yeah, playoffs, but like I don't know that that Toronto starting five is really good. Yeah, like it's really really good. So they yeah. really just need to improve their bench, and they can be a real pain in the ass. I know what you're saying. It's an interesting and conversation. Who knows? Well, not a luckily comes back that could be helpful to them because he was good yeah. in the playoffs. But the luckily for the Celtics, they probably have a better future than either of them. Oh, the so. Celtics have the best <laughs> best depth in the league. Somebody got yeah. mad at me that I said that the Celtics have the best guard rotation in the league, and they started throwing like Donovan Mitchell in there. Like I was just talking about point guards, like White, Smart, I know what you're saying. Brogdon are all like technically point guards, even though they play mm-hmm. White at the two. Like he can play the point guard and Pritchard there too, obviously. Yeah, and if you really want to screw around, then throw Jalen Brown in there, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> like he's averaging 30 points a game over his last 10. He's average, he's 13th in the league in scoring and he's the number two on this team. All right. I'm hungry. I, there you go. We'll wrap got, here. Wings waiting for me. We'll Jack wrap has here. a family member waiting at the. Yes. Train yes. Yes. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're calling it. We appreciate you guys for listening. Like I said, we're leaving guy Boston sports. So if that's where you watch uh, the YouTube videos or the pregame streams, Make sure to head on over to the How About Them Celtics podcast YouTube channel and subscribe. Uh, again, How About Them Celtics podcast on YouTube. I'll let Sam wrap it up, though. Yeah, thank you very much for listening or watching. If you're watching, you better be on How About Them Celtics because that's all we're going to be from now. Actually, I don't even think the pods are going to be on Guy Boston anymore. Yeah, pods are no longer on yeah, Guy Boston. Yeah, so you're on How About Them Celtics. Subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, say some nice things, tell us we're handsome. If you're on the streaming services, you can follow us, leave a nice review, and leave a comment saying we're handsome. And if you want to follow us on TikTok, Instagram, or Twitter, and Facebook, you can leave a like now. we got a page again. Yes. Um, it's how about them C's on Celtic on Celtics on Facebook. It's just the name of the pod, the full name of the podcast. You'll see it. It's the colors and everything. Uh, if you want more of Jack, he's writing all over the place, covering all kinds of teams at Jack Simone NBA. He's putting in work. And if you want more mediocre work about uh, clickbait and dancing, even though I have done a couple good pieces this week at Sam LaFrance NBA on Twitter. That's it for us. Bye. Check, check, go. Come on.